are at the Las Vegas SEMA Show 2017. You've got Dan Mick. Richard Mick. And I'm Riley Augustine from British Columbia, Canada. She was with us on the trail, Hell's Revenge, one of our earlier episodes. So much stuff to see. Yeah, we're definitely not in Moab anymore. Yeah, no, yeah, no Moab, desert no around far. here. Just look around you, that's Las Vegas, baby. Yeah. There are so many things to see here. We're hoping to get inside the building along with everybody else and get a look at all the cool new stuff that SEMA has to offer. Every year there's more and more things. Kind of blows me away. If you've never been to the SEMA show, it's an outstanding show. There's so many millions of dollars in every booth, it looks like. Let's go see what we can find. Absolutely, I can't wait for it. All right, let's go. Come here, quick. You need one of these. I do. I need two of those, I think. Well, a front and a rear both. Front and a rear, yeah. You betcha. It's an axle giveaway. Dana 44s. Ultimate 44s from Spicer. Where do I sign up? I don't know. Let's see if we can find somebody. <laughs> Where do we sign up? She wants to know. Come on over here. I know. It's on the wrong side, buddy. Randall. How's it going? Good. Dan, yeah, how's it going? Got Randall here from Spicer. This is Riley. She needs to sign Hi, up Riley, for some axles. Awesome, yeah, we're doing an axle giveaway, so we got an iPad right over here and you can sign up. Uh, hopefully you'll win. I'll be doing that, you betcha. Awesome, that. for sure. Oh, that's probably one of the coolest things I think I've ever seen. <laughs> All right, guys, now if you're into the super, super extreme stuff, this is something that I would highly, highly recommend. Like, how slick is that, right? Like. For you guys that are going around and you're doing the super, super extreme stuff, Moab Slick Rock, the rear wheel steer for these four-door JKs, the tighter turning radius makes a huge difference. I would highly recommend this setup for you guys. Look what we found here, Scott. How's it going? Nope. Links. Links. Show us. We have a head unit and a computer brain, if you will, that has six or seven different modules. And we're still learning all this ourselves, but a lot of things we can do here. So, for example, we'll go down to this touch screen here and come on now. And we're going to show you we've got seven different modules here. So we've got suspension, lighting, battery, speedometer, front and rear lockers, and air compressor. So, for example, when I go to air compressor here, I can actually set the tire pressure on the vehicle by, by using this here. So I put the hose on the vehicle, I can air up to a certain PSI, or I can air it down to a certain PSI. We've also got a uh, GPS system on it, so you're gonna have speedometer, altitude, bearing, and all that sort of thing. So there's a lot of different things with it. Your air lockers are gonna be able to go with a touch of a switch here. So we'll be able to do this and have both air lockers right there on the switch, come on now. The big advantage of this is updatability. So you're going to be able to upgrade from these seven modules we have now to 25 in the future. You'll be able to upgrade with Wi-Fi, um, as well as where do you put all the switches now? Everybody's putting a lot of different switches and, and options on their vehicle. Here's a place to do it without putting a bunch of holes in your dash. Here we are in the full traction suspension booth with Steve Kramer, the owner. I've known Steve for many years. Tell us about what you got here to eliminate the uh, rear track bar. This is what's called the CRC link. It stands, it's an acronym that stands for Constant Roll Center. And what Constant Roll Center is, is the elimination of the chassis of your Jeep, in this case a JK, from yawing as the suspension moves over the axle. What this does, very simply, this works the same as you probably see a triangulated D-bar, whether it's a three-link or, or a four-link. This works exactly the same as that, is that it creates a, a centered path for the suspension or the chassis to travel over the suspension. This eliminates the chassis and the arm. We use one link coming off the factory mount on the passenger side, create a new mount on the driver's side, we eliminate the rear track bar, and the result is, is that the handling is way more predictable in a big left-hand left-hand turn and a right-hand turn, etc. 
just, it, you'll, you'll find that it's just, it turns flatter and is way more predictable in terms of Who wouldn't want something that rides this nice in the back of their Jeeps, right? Something else you've seen at the new 2017 SEMA show. Alright guys, here we are at Rugged, uh, Rugged Radios. Richard, I hear you guys use these quite a bit. What can you tell me about them? Yes, so if you look over here, these little handheld radios, uh, they're about as strong as a normal CB. Okay, about the same distance. A little more even from what I've experienced. With our big radios over here, started out with these radios. These, these small ones, about 25 watts, they were really good for talking anywhere on the same trail, like anywhere on Hell's Revenge together. But then we went up to these 60 watt radios and we've been able to talk to each other on any trail in Moab with each other. You know, Hell's Revenge all the way out to Golden Spike. That's really cool. easy, no problem. So that's quite a large range. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they just came out with this new one. It's a 100 watt radio. Oh wow. This is a... Uh, I don't know, I honestly, I don't think that we we have that big of a terrain in Moab to cover for that big of a radio. That big, <laughs> hey, wow, that's yeah. impressive. So we've been very happy with our 60 watt radios. Cell phones are cool, but you know, there's we, we can reach each other with these radios a lot more places than uh, cell phone coverage provides, even in Moab. Hey Dad, I think we found our new stripe drop. Look at that, it's got our colors, black, white, yellow, orange, red. I like that, you know, and that's a pretty sweet looking ride. I'd drive it, would you drive it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Look at these beautiful FJ40s and how well they have been rebuilt. Look at this beautiful setup in this Warren winch up front with this, with this synthetic line. That is absolutely gorgeous, super heavy duty. They did a really, really nice job with making the engine bay all really nice and clean like that. That's got to be a custom cover. I don't think I've seen one of those before. Oh, it's carbon fiber too. That's beautiful. And the front interlocking hubs, look at that. Very nice. Oh, wow, Tom, you got to get a shot of that center console. How cool is that? Oh my goodness. You haven't seen that in a Jeep. That is beautiful. Oh man, those shifters. They've kind of gone, they've gone over the top with this thing. Wow. Look at this safari top, hey? Removable door, removable windows. Flip up. Oh, these doors are gorgeous. So much room back there too, wow. I really like that external, uh, external fuel tank set up there. It's really nice, it looks really sharp. Oh wow, and they have the flush mounted, flush mounted lights in there. That's really sweet. Very cool. Absolutely gorgeous setup. Really, really, really gorgeous. This big guy here, Jim, he owns Dynatrack, another good company to deal with. Tell us about the latest axles. So our latest axle is our uh, Hardcore Plus package. So that is basically an XT60 front with our new 1550 wheel end on it. And it also is the new XT60 standard cut rear with a full flow uh, package on it. This is the new XT60 rear, so it's got the Pro Rock shape. It's got all the rigidity features that come in the XT60 fronts. Now the XT60 front's been out for a while, but that housing is new. So it's low pinion, so it's ideal for the longer wheelbases and the heavier weighted cars. So we all still have our Pro Rock 80 for the guys that really want to do the really big builds, but we wanted to give guys something a little bit on the lighter side. So this is the strongest, lightest, highest ground clearance, 60 class axle money can buy. Show us your big axle over here. So this is our uh, this is our Pro Rock 80. Now we've had this out for quite a while now. This comes standard with four inch tubes, 40 spline shafts, 11 and a quarter inch ring gear. It's a 
full floater with big bearings on the wheel ends to support big tires. And uh, this is it. This is the strongest actually you can put just about anything out there in this four-wheel drive today. Why don't you lift that up? See, see how that feel? How's the weight of that feel to you? That's heavy. Okay. This is some uh, solid. That's some strong machine. That's a stock JK knuckle. Yeah. Now, why don't you pick up our 1550 knuckle here and see how, how that feels. Wow. That's light, isn't it? Yeah, as big as it is, that's, that's for right. sure. That's uh, over two and a half times stronger than that knuckle, and it's a lot lighter. That's what's on our new 1550 wheel end for our XT60s. Yeah, that's pretty massive. This is our competition alloy 35 spline shaft for the 1480U joint, which is common in Dana 60s. Right. This is the next generation of shaft we have. It's a 1550 joint. It's 40 spline. So I tell you what, why don't you do the same thing? Why don't you pick these up and you tell me which one you think is a little heavier? Well, that's a heavy shaft. You'd have a hard time How about twisting this one? that one. <laughs> Wow. It's three pounds lighter. I noticed that. It's three pounds lighter, even how though it's got it, a how bigger it yoke be? and it's 40 spline. How can it be? So this is 40% stronger than that, and it's three pounds lighter. How can it be lighter than that one? It's magic. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> it is hollow inside. <laughs> if you know anything about tubing and such, you can take a big steel bar, you can wrap it over your head and bend it like this. But if you try to do that with tubing, you got two walls that you can't, you gotta kink one of them like this. Yeah. And that's what makes that stronger. You got two walls to it. Right. So one of the things you want is you want high strength with a 40 spline shaft that won't fail or twist. But you need it to have a little bit of ductility, a little spring in its step so that it doesn't push forces into other parts that may not be able to handle it. That's another thing to look at when you're out off-roading. Thanks for talking to us, Jim. My pleasure, Jim. You bet. Good to see you again. You too. Terraflex booth. I'm super, super excited to be here and talk about talk to these guys about their product because my Jeep runs all Terraflex. Step over here, Dennis. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Dennis and I, we were together in Paris for a while. True story. In France. Riley, come here. I seen you looking. I seen you looking at a differential. This is what you need right here. I know. Everybody needs one, I think. One of these bad boys. Yeah. Yeah. You won't well, break that. That's the 44 version of it. So you have a 30 or a 44. Right. Right. You know, three and a quarter inch tubes. Um, the quarter wall on this one, you can go three eighths on the 60s. Right. But uh, God, by by kicking that housing out, putting some webbing in there on both ends, we extended it out a couple inches. So. Right, eh? it, gets, it just, just makes that moment arm, that break-off angle, a little bit less, which adds a little more strength to it. Right. Now, one thing that we've been hearing a lot of with the, in terms of axles with, with guys talking is full floating and semi-floating. I'm wondering if you can explain the difference between the two. Yeah, yeah. So, there's a, there's a full float rear axle right there. So the difference between, like this is a, this would be a semi. You don't see all this, all the bolt patterns in here. Because what you're looking at right there is the axle shaft itself. Right. So you're gonna undo these bolts. This your Jeep's sitting on the ground. The tires on it, sitting in the parking lot. Slide that shaft out. Yep. And no weight is being carried by that shaft whatsoever, which reduces the shock load and the stresses on that shaft a lot. So I mean, you could even run the same 30 or 32 spline shaft that you're running in your Jeep and actually have it act like a much stronger shaft because you've taken so much load away. Right, okay. You this know, is strong. Well, you got two alone. bearings in here, much bigger, stronger, packing the weight of the vehicle. Yeah, and being tapered roller bearing, bearings, they take the axial and the radial load as well, right? So they're yeah. right. evenly dispersed. Well, here's so, a problem I had on the trail. Yeah, here's the had that. Right here. Those little studs are half inch. Yeah, yeah. 
And these over here are? 916. 916, much beefier. Here you got everything in a boat pattern about that big around. Over here it's much bigger. You got, you know, a lot more leverage being forced on these to snap right. them off. Yeah. I've had all five of these lug nuts snap off oh. numerous times on the trail. Yeah. You'll never do that with these. This is beautiful. I want one. Several, actually. You got this really, really nice Jeep from Eaton. The locking differentials. This is nice. Got the PSC hydro assist steering on it, Odyssey battery, curry axles, Mastercraft seats, Atlas transfer case. You got the power tank. This is great for air and your vehicle tires back up once you come off the trail. Got the Curry anti-rock sway bars in the rear and in the front. This is one nice ride right here. Definitely, I would drive it. Back in 1940, the U.S. government said, we need something other than horse and carriage to help us go to war. And they went out and asked for bids. What you're seeing here are the three prototypes that were brought to the government. This is made by? This is a Willis MA. This is a Ford GP. And the last one here is the Bantam. The government liked the Bantam prototype the best. Bantam got the contract. Bantam ultimately couldn't fulfill the contract. So they said, all right, Willis, step in. I'll do all this stuff. Ultimately, Ford was involved in this. So you have military vehicles being built from 1941 to 1945 that were being built by Willis and by Ford that were generic in purpose. What these three platforms started as a prototype became what you see here, which is the Willis MB. This is a 42. They started in 41. There are slight different variations, so for purists and, and restoration enthusiasts, they'd be able to tell differences on 41 to 41 and a half versus 42 to 45. There, this is a 51. So they continued using this vehicle, whether it was in or out of wartime. And then ultimately, in 52, the M38A1 came about, and this is where you see the change that really made into the civilian version. This particular one is a high fording vehicle. You'll notice the high snorkel for the intake, the high exhaust. So literally the driver of this would have needed his own air apparatus because the vehicle could go deeper than he could. Now this is this is what the CJ5 and CJ7 came out. CJ5, CJ6, 7, and ultimately the CJ8, yeah. So the, the civilian versions of all of these at the same time are coming out. So once World War II was over, the CJ2, uh, 2A came out. Right. From there it went to the CJ3A and the 3B. This particular one would be the civilian version of this would be a 3A. All right. Well, it's been great talking with you here. Dan, thank you very much. Thank you, Pat. You've always been a great supporter of us. Thank you very much for the history lesson. Thank That's you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs>
Well, in beadlocks, it's all for low air pressure to get traction out of the tires. We want to lower the air pressure so we can get a little bit better traction, and more conforming to the terrain that we're trying to get over. The reason we go to a double beadlock is that in some racing instances, we cut the tire and the tire goes flat. The back bead slides off the bead seat and comes down and it just wads up and you can no longer go forward with the car. With both beads locked down onto the wheel, you just stand on the gas, the tire goes heaven and hell, and you keep continuing on down the path. Now we've moved outside to the SCORE race line booth and uh, here we, this is how we got going on with them being put together. Something else. So you can see is like we showed you inside where we had the, the center was your flange in and then the double beadlock. So, you know, this is just the finished product that you can actually take and put on your car. Who doesn't need a set from race line wheels? Anybody that it's in a huge extreme uh, off-road application needs these. This is so cool. Wow, look at this here, Richard. It's got a little Honda motor in the back here. I'd drive it. I'd drive it. Here we are at the BFG booth with uh, one of these Baja trucks here. I've actually got to see these in action for the very first time last night. That was the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Have you ever been to uh, King of the Hammers though? It's on my list. Yeah. <laughs> well, each, each of the different cars, the Ultra 4 and the Trophy trucks are their own unique style. The Trophy trucks go faster on dirt roads, That's definitely. Right. Yeah. They'd like to, uh, I haven't seen these uh, get air before, which was really, really interesting and they had the drones following them, which was really cool. Uh, they were jumping so high that they were hitting the drones. And the drones had to <laughs> uh, spin around and go back to home base. And that was really, really cool. I wonder how many spares they would have to have. Right. <laughs> the Ultra Force, I wouldn't say, can get that high. They, they, could, they could jump, don't get me wrong, but the Ultra Force and the, the King of the Hammers is, is a lot shorter of a race at the same time period, but they're doing a lot of rock crawling right. stuff. Right, a lot of technical stuff. Yeah. 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 Just scooting around boulders. They, they even drove on top of each other to get around these obstacles. If the guy in front of them wasn't climbing the obstacle well enough, he'd just, he'd just drive up on top of him and just keep going and uh, wow. yeah these these don't have as much of a clearance and will base that those do they would get stuck pretty quick in some of those narrow rock climbs Aaron and Austin, but Kansas definitely are each have their own extreme terrain they go over right I find that these uh, they sound not only do they sound really cool but I don't know if you guys have ever smelled race fuel it's pretty good and I thoroughly enjoy it right with that last thing well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go find another Jeep. So. I think so, yeah. We're a little out of our element here, I think. Yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> Hey, we're in the Daystar booth. These guys get the Moab every year. Tell us about the J10 pickup over here. Yeah, so we uh, started a, uh, acquired a J10 a couple of years ago. And we've been sitting around the shops and Mark goes, let's build it. So we uh, signed up to do Ultimate Adventure. So we had a JK four door. We uh, took the body off, cut the floor out of the JK, put it into the cab of the J10. So the interior and everything is a JK. And then it has a 3.8 with the uh, Spintex uh, supercharger on it. And then with a custom aluminum bed from uh, Aqualoo. And one of the cool things we did is we did a toolbox. So tools were always hard to find in the back of your GP. They're banging sure. down. So we did Where'd that come from? Tool tray. Yeah, right underneath the bed. Oh wow, look at that. So nice and neat, so you open it up and there's your tools. We got our can cans on it. Another great American made product by Daystar. Yep. Two gallons capacity, so you have your drinking water. We have a universal fluid to put cooling, gas, whatever you want to put in it. The CJ10 Hancho. And we're sporting our new uh, Voodoo off road ropes. So this is yep. a recovery line. Yep. This one's rated 38,000 pounds. And then our winch line that's rated 20,800. Cool. All made in uh, America. Uh, those are the uh, truck lights. Yeah. The interior is just like a regular JK08. That's we have pretty power sweet. steering, uh, cruise control, everything. Remote start. The military, they have this wide opening for the um, when the military guys would get in and out right. in the Air Force bases because it was an Air Force tub. Right. So and they had hay.
headgear and stuff, and they wanted something clean entry. Right. So instead of have the CJs, had the radius right. on the doors. I know that. Yeah. Very cool. It's a lot of one-off stuff built into this oh, here. Yeah. Great talking with you. Thanks, you, Dan. Hope to see you more when oh, you get yes, there. Definitely. But we're at Extreme Outback Products. We're with George Caruso's. He's got some awesome-looking air compressors here. Tell us a little bit about what, what you got here. I see Thanks. a Thank little you. battery system. Absolutely. All kinds of things. Light, yeah. We specialize in inflation and deflation and quick inflation. So we have continuous duty air compressors in different horsepower ranges in both 12 and 24 volt. Our units go anywhere from one and a half horsepower down to a quarter horsepower. Uh, so that's our electric line that runs off the battery. We also have belt drive versions. So we have about 135 mounting brackets for all the full size pickup trucks made in the USA. Everything from 1973 to today, uh, we go all the way down to dual sport and ATV compressors uh, for guys that are running through Moab and side-by-sides and quads. We have specialty kits for that. Tell me about your tire repair kits. Sure. We make everything in-house. This whole board is in this pouch. Okay. We don't use plastic cases. We use a flexible pouch. So where would you use a pouch that big? If you cut a sidewall, we actually have a stitching kit where you can stitch the sidewall if you can't get the plugs to hold, and you can, it's called a Baja boot, you can patch it from the inside. Again, it's a throwaway tire, but it's to get you back off the trail. We have bead breakers uh, for everything from automobiles, trucks, all the way down to motorcycles. That's awesome. We carry recovery kits that we do in-house. All of our webbing is made in the United States, manufactured and sewn in the USA, so we have quality control on the webbing. That's our tree trunk protector. And we use a full Beefy. 10 foot long, so you can get around most trees. This is what you would consider more of a static line. Right. Where that would be more dynamic. Right. This is polyester, which does not stretch. It right. stretches very minimal, a couple percent. Nylon stretches between 15 and 20% under load to give you a slingshot effect. Like the sign says, you can't live without air. That's right. Got to have it. Exactly. Great talking with you. Appreciate it, Daniel. Thank you for coming Thanks by. Thanks for showing us around. Right. If you haven't ever been to this SEMA show, folks, I can't say it too many times. Try to find a way to come down here to Vegas at this time. There's hot rods, everything you can imagine under the sun. If it can bolt three or four wheels to it and tires, it's here. Yes. From the big monster trucks to the, the little racers around in the circles. There's so many things to see. Hey, look at that Jeep over there. I'm gonna go look at that. All right.